Good evening. I think it's time to say evening. Uh, it is a real pri privilege to be uh, the last speaker at this conference um, before, of course, Mika's concluding remarks. And it is uh, a great pleasure to be uh, in Helsinki again for the second time, uh, for the second time in the month of May, I must say, and uh, I don't think I have to add anything. The title of my remarks in the uh, program uh, was left uh, deliberately vague. Um, it would be, in fact, unconscionable of, of me to speak about the present and future of international arbitration in uh, 20 minutes uh, and at the end of such a long and intense uh, day with the drinks uh, looming outside. Uh, and I know this is what you're keeping his, you here, not, certainly not my, my remarks. Uh, in fact, I will try to discuss uh, in the time I have the uh, present and future of international arbitration from one particular angle, which is uh, the place of arbitration, trying to observe the evolution of uh, trends in this respect over the last, I would say, 20, 30 years and possibly try to identify where uh, we uh, are going. So I'll try to do so from uh, an ICC perspective, of course, an ICC court uh, perspective, and try to identify trends uh, and also the factors uh, of the competition among arbitration centers. Try to distinguish also between uh, old and new uh, venues for international arbitration and also competition among the uh, established centers for international uh, arbitration. At the threshold observation, I think it is fair to say that uh, users of international arbitration uh, today enjoy a much uh, broader uh, uh, choice of reliable places of arbitration to choose from when they have to select a venue uh, of, of, of arbitration. And so do um, arbitration institutions, of course, when they have to select a venue in the absence of parties' agreement. So let's start with a very brief um, statistical uh, overview. I think an analysis of the evolution of the place of arbitration in uh, ICC cases shows a very clear trend towards uh, diversification. Diversification is certainly one of the, of the key words. So just to give you an idea, in 2015, uh, last year, 97 different cities in 56 different jurisdictions were chosen either by the parties or by the ICC court as places of ICC uh, arbitration. In 2014 and 2013, the number was even uh, higher. So over the last 10 years, these figures have increased uh, steadily and very significantly. Looking back um, over the past 20 years, it is clear that these figures have more than doubled. In uh, 1992, for example, ICC arbitrations were seated in no more than 25 uh, different uh, countries. This is, I think, a direct uh, consequence of the increasingly international nature of uh, ICC uh, arbitration, which reflects similar trends also in other fields, for example, other parameters, for example, the nationality of arbitrators involved in ICC cases, and uh, more importantly, and I'll come to this in a minute, the nationality of the parties involved in uh, cases. So talking about arbitrators, for example, last year, 2015, ICC cases, um, new ICC cases uh, registered involved uh, arbitration, uh, arbitrators from 77 different uh, countries. Uh, back 10 years, in 2005, the nationality represented were only uh, 68. To give you a more concrete example, the percentage of Asian arbitrators increased from approximately 7% in 2014 to more than 12% in 2013, which was the, the record year. And in the same period, the number of arbitrators from Northern or Western Europe decreased from 62% to only 54%, and down um, to 53% in 2015. Although these trends are, I think, generalized and uh, particularly evident in the last 10 years, I think the rate, the pace of the diversification is not seen uh, equally across the board. So, uh, for example, the choice of northern and western uh, European jurisdictions as preferred seats of arbitration is not declining as rapidly as the origin of the par parties from the same uh, region. So in 2014, almost 48, so, so almost half of the parties involved in ICC cases were originated from uh, western and northern uh, Europe. The number dropped to 30, 31% in only uh, 10 years. In the same period, northern and western seats dropped only from 69% to 64. 
these figures clearly show that the decreasing predominance of uh, Northern and Western Europe overall in, in ICC uh, arbitration, but also that the diversification of the origin of the parties and arbitrators involved in ICC cases is, uh, and, and of the choice of the applicable law as well is not directly proportionate to the diversification of the place of arbitration. I think more generally the list of the top 20 uh, countries and, and, and cities uh, chosen for um, I, ICC uh, arbitrations uh, is very different from uh, what is, is not very different from what it used to be only 20 years ago. Whereas the top 20 nationalities in terms of parties has changed significantly. Talking about places of arbitration, uh, since 1998, the uh, first five uh, places of arbitration have not changed: Paris, London, uh, Geneva, and Zurich. Uh, although the order might have changed uh, over time, with Singapore and New York competing for the, the fifth uh, place. And I would say since 2007, almost 10 years, even the order of the top five seats has remi remained mo almost uh, unchanged, with Paris first, followed by London, Geneva, Zurich, and uh, Singapore, with the only exception of uh, New York, which became the third place of arbitration before London and Singapore in 2015. So this necessarily very succinct um, statistical analysis seems to show, and I think this is another key term, a certain uh, conservatism when it comes to the choice of the place of arbitration. So only a very limited number of uh, jurisdictions and cities have managed to impose themselves as important centers of uh, international arbitrations in the past 20 years. These generally correspond to what are considered um, financial and legal hotspots, um, development of, of which seems to have attracted arbitration much more than what I would call um, homecoming trend, which is the choice of the place of arbitration uh, on the basis of the, the parties' nationality, the parties involved in the case. So for example, in Asia, uh, a financial and legal hotspot has uh, Singapore has succeeded in attracting numerous international arbitration cases, again statistical data, 12, only 12 ICC arbitrations were seated in Singapore in 2006, only 10 years ago, and this number rose to 38 uh, last year, so a huge uh, increase. The same is not true for other places in Asia, despite the huge growth of Asia, so places like Kuala Lumpur or Bangkok or New Delhi, despite the huge increase of parties from uh, these countries, have, haven't seen uh, a similar um, increase. Um, in recent years, I think we all heard and read that numerous cities um, were prophesied a, a future or a, an imminent important um, development in terms of becoming important venues for international arbitration. We heard this about uh, Dublin, Mauritius, where, by the way, the ICA conference were, was held only a few weeks ago, Istanbul, uh, Beirut, and even Honolulu. And none of them, of course, we can now say, uh, has found a place among the most popular global arbitration uh, hubs. So only, as I said, a very few cities managed to enter this um, number. Uh, I think two observations are, um, of course, in order when we consider this data. The first one is that it takes some time before parties start referring to a place of arbitration and the time when this um, uh, results in a, in a dispute. Uh, according to ICC data, there is generally an interval between two and five years between the time of the contract on average and the time when this um, uh, results in a, in a dispute. And the second is that uh, although the list of the most popular places of arbitration has, as I said, hardly changed between 1998 and 2015, it is quite noteworthy that um, in 1982, which is only 15 years before Singapore entered the list of the top five places of ICC arbitration, not a single ICC arbitration was based, I'm not saying in Singapore, but in uh, Southeast Asia at all. Therefore, this um, means that uh, the possible pace at which a city may gain importance uh, as a possible place of arbitration and the, the emergence uh, of, of new hubs um, in the next few years should not be excluded because this happens, of course, very, very rapidly. Now, let's come to the criteria uh, for the choice of the place of arbitration. Uh, Professor Hans Smith once semi-jokingly remarked that uh, the sole important characteristic of a good arbitral seat is the quality of hotels and the local uh, gastronomy. Um, considering what I will say in a few minutes about my own country, Italy, um, I, I have some doubts, especially as, as far as gastronomy is concerned. 
Um, according to in-house lawyers interviewed for the purpose of the 2010 Queen Mary uh, survey, the place of arbitration is the second most important choice after the choice of the law uh, governing the contract, um, the most, second most important choice to be made in drafting a dispute resolution clause. Um, and the most significant factors in, in doing so were identified in, uh, first, the legal infrastructure. 62% uh, of the interviewees responded the legal infrastructure is the most important consideration. And this includes, of course, uh, the quality of the national arbitration law, but also more generally considerations about uh, neutrality and impartiality. Now, neutrality uh, is a term that in international arbitration is more frequently referred to the uh, arbitrator than to the place of arbitration, but I think it plays an important role also with respect to the place of arbitration, and it has a double role with respect to the place of arbitration. Uh, it has a first meaning, which is, of course, uh, I would say geographical, and it depends also on the uh, origin of the parties. A certain place of arbitration can be considered as being neutral with respect to whom the parties involved in the case uh, are. So in, in a way, uh, it is impossible in, in this respect to say what is a neutral place of arbitration in the abstract. But the second meaning of neutrality with respect to the place of arbitration is neither geographical nor contingent about the nationality of the parties, but it has to do with the all, overall arbitration friendliness of a certain uh, jurisdiction as reflected in particular in the track record in enforcing arbitration agreements and arbitral awards, and whether, of course, the jurisdiction is a signatory to the main uh, uh, arbitration conventions, um, including the, the New York Convention. Um, in fact, as also noted in the 2010 Queen Mary uh, survey, whether the country is a signatory to the New York Convention is for arbitration users, of course, a priority, but given the generalized wide acceptance of the New York Convention, it is fair to say that it is now generally expected and places of arbitration which are not um, signatory to the jurisdictions which are not signatory to the New York Convention are not even considered uh, for as, as suitable places of arbitration. Second, the law governing the substance of the dispute. Almost half of the interviewees responded this is a factor, I think quite surprisingly, because there is a clear distinction between the applicable law and the place of arbitration and the rationale underlying the two um, choices. Third, convenience. Convenience includes uh, efficiency of court proceedings, uh, language, established contacts with lawyers in the jurisdiction, and of course, the location of the, of the parties and the familiarity of the parties, cultural familiarity of the parties with the place of arbitration. Fourth, the general infrastructure, which uh, includes also uh, cost, transport connections, and the existence of hearing uh, facilities. And finally, uh, more specifically, the uh, location of the people involved in the arbitration. And I think this is quite remarkable that it's only the last consideration given the importance of uh, and the impact on the costs of the, of the proceedings. So to summarize, legal uh, considerations seem to prevail over practical and, and cultural ones. So what seems to matter is really the overall arbitration-friendly environment at the place of arbitration, as reflected in the law applicable to, to the process and the general reputation of the courts and of the legal community of the jurisdiction uh, in question. Um, it is well known that there is nowadays a fierce competition among uh, uh, jurisdictions to attract international uh, cases. And commentators have observed that this is not only to ripen the immediate economic uh, benefits, of course, of uh, attracting cases, which means, the, uh, of course, the, the, the use of facilities, hotels, restaurants, uh, legal services, of course. But there is also a somewhat intangible uh, benefit, which uh, consists in gaining a reputation of, uh, for being a venue for international arbitration, which has to do with being a place where the rule of law is uh, generally uh, respected. And so people are happy to go and see their disputes uh, resolved uh, there. So the success of a jurisdiction as a place of arbitration is increasingly regarded as an important factor to raise the, the, the country's uh, reputation as, the place, uh, as a place where the rule of law is uh, firmly established. Now, if uh, there is consensus with respect to the minimum requirements for a jurisdiction to compete for a place among the top venues for international arbitration, and this is, of course, as I said, the establishment of an arbitration-friendly legal framework, 
There is also um, little doubt that this depends on adopting a progressive uh, arbitration uh, law and, as I said, the signing of the major uh, international arbitration uh, instrument and also an efficient and impartial judicial system and, more generally, as I said, adherence to the rule of law. So it is quite clear, for example, observing um, uh, ICC empirical um, uh, data, that uh, Adopting uh, a, a, a new arbitration law, an arbitration-friendly uh, law, uh, certainly um, attracts more uh, cases to a certain uh, jurisdictions. Now, in theory, any law which uh, recognizes the preeminence of party autonomy and limits unwarranted interference by, by um, uh, courts would qualify for this uh, purpose. Um, but these objectives can be achieved in different ways if we look at the legislation. For example, four of the five top uh, places of arbitration worldwide uh, have uh, adopted, and this is Switzerland, the UK, France, uh, and New York, have adopted arbitration laws which are not modeled on the ancestral uh, model law. In practice, however, um, it seems that the model law has become the benchmark for any jurisdiction hoping to attract more international arbitrations, from, as can be seen from the fact that I would say most, uh, if not uh, all, uh, recent legal reforms in several jurisdictions have um, been um, driven by uh, the intention to bring the legislation more in line with the, with the model law. So this shows that enactment of the model law is unquestionably an asset for a country to become a serious player in this market of the uh, place of arbitration, and although, of course, per se, it cannot uh, guarantee success, and there may be other ways uh, how this uh, goal can be, can be achieved. Um, it is also important to see to what extent the support of local authorities um, can uh, be regarded as a key factor. Uh, in a debate of a few years uh, ago, uh, Theresa Cheng, who is uh, currently the president of the Hong Kong International Arbitration uh, Center, argued that Hong Kong's evolution um, in importance as a place of arbitration did not come from what she called an in artificial intervention of the government, but rather from what she called uh, natural uh, selection. Uh, governmental initiatives, of course, may serve to build a seat in the short term, but long-term uh, survival hinges, as she said, upon the intimate ability and intimate understanding of people in a particular jurisdiction. So this could in part, uh, this argument could in part explain the, the conservatism I was referring to a few minutes ago. But this position, of course, is not universally shared. At the same uh, debate, uh, Michael Wang, a well-known practitioner, identified, uh, considering uh, the success of Singapore as a place of arbitration, identified the main reason for, uh, for this success in organized initiatives which managed to grow the country's reputation and establish what he called Singapore as a brand. And among these initiatives, he listed up-to-date arbitration legislation and um, institutional arbitration rules, of course, the appointment of dedicated arbitration uh, judges, uh, a neutral and corruption-free uh, legal system. Others also stressed, and I tend to agree with this position, that in order to achieve this uh, goal, governmental initiatives um, need to be supported by the active involvement and support of the local uh, arbitration community. Now, changing uh, for a moment the focus between old and new venues of arbitration to uh, the competition between the top uh, destinations, so we are now inquiring not how to enter the rank of the most popular places of arbitration, but rather how to um, improve the ranking among the first uh, five, uh, which may also tell us whether we'll see a change in the foreseeable uh, future. Um, I think, of course, that the fact that, as I say, this is an increasingly competitive uh, market means that original market leaders now have to uh, raise to the challenge of, of new centers, and also that the more sophisticated the users, which means the parties, their council, um, uh, the more selective they will be in the choice of the place of arbitration. And so they will be extremely careful to sometimes details of what makes a, a certain place of arbitration better than other generally equally good uh, places. Uh, Jan Paulson recently observed that the finality of arbitral awards and the speed and cost of the overall process, including the possible review by local courts, are the essential factors uh, taken into account for the purpose of selecting the top uh, place of arbitration. Now, 
I think it may reasonably be expected that all the destinations which aspire to being uh, the um, ideal places of arbitration meet these requirements. They all have up-to-date arbitration laws and arbitration-friendly judicial systems, which doesn't interfere with the arbitral process. So whenever all these essential requirements are met, then um, we need probably something else. And this is, uh, in my opinion, the active um, promotion of finality and speed by the um, local legal system. And I think two examples, very quickly, are, are relevant in this respect. One is the possibility of obtaining um, anti-suit injunctions um, in support of arbitration. And the second is enforcement of uh, emergency arbitrators. I'm referring very briefly to these two aspects as examples. The role of the um, court's power to issue anti-suit anti injunctions in support of um, arbitration uh, and, and the role it has in uh, enhancing the chances of a certain jurisdiction of becoming uh, a top uh, ranking place of arbitration is well illustrated by Lord Hoffman's um, opinion in the well-known uh, 2007 West Anchors case. He described the use of anti-suit injunctions to enforce an arbitration agreement as an effective manner in which courts can proactively assist the arbitral process. So if, I can, if you can bear uh, with me for a minute, I will uh, quote from his opinion, and he put it clearly in terms of competition. He said, courts are there to serve the business community rather than other way around. No one is obliged to choose London. The existence of the jurisdiction to restrain proceedings in breach of an arbitration agreement clearly does not deter parties uh, to commercial agreements. On the contrary, it may be regarded as one of the advantages which the chosen seat of arbitration has to offer. It should be noted that the European community is engaged not only with regulating commerce between member states, but also in competing with the rest of the world. If the member states of the European community are unable to offer a seat of arbitration capable of making orders restraining parties from acting in breach of the arbitration agreement, there is no shortage of other states which will. There seems to be no doctrinal necessity or practical advantage which requires the European community handicap itself by denying its court the right to exercise the same jurisdiction. Very clear, I think. Second point I was mentioning, obtaining a decision on uh, urgent interim relief from an emergency arbitrator prior to the constitution of the arbitral tribunal is now possible under the most popular international arbitration um, institution rules, including the ICC, the LCIA, SIAC and, I understand, uh, the Finnish Arbitration uh, Institute and the St Stockholm Institute. However, the enforceability of these orders may still uh, prove problematic, particularly due to the uncertain uh, characterization of these orders uh, as awards or uh, of the entire process as uh, arbitration. Now, to resolve the problem, a number of jurisdictions, uh, again in Asia, including Singapore, Hong Kong, have adopted specific legislation to allow the enforcement of orders made by uh, emergency arbitrators, regardless of the nature as a, or the characterization of these decisions as orders or uh, awards. Now, given the growing importance of effective, urgent uh, relief at the early stages of the dispute, uh, sometimes before the constitution of the tribunal, I think this enforcement regime is likely to play an important role in the choice of the place of arbitration in the future. Now, I know uh, I'm running out of time, so I will uh, come to my conclusions, but before doing so, uh, a few remarks on uh, Finland as a place of arbitration, without, of course, pretending to express any uh, firm view about a situation and the jurisdiction I'm, of course, not very familiar uh, with, and I'm not qualified, of course, to express any, any, any view on. Well, first of all, a few numbers, and uh, I must say these are not very good. Uh, only 18 ICC cases were seated in Finland over the last 10 years, less than, than two on, 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 on average. Uh, over the same 10-year uh, uh, period, uh, more than 100 Finnish parties were involved in uh, ICC uh, cases. This, mean, this means that Finland, in one of those cases, where there, is, there are no comparable trends between the choice of international arbitration, particularly ICC uh, arbitration, by Finnish parties and the choice of the country as a place for uh, arbitration. And I'm quite familiar with this phenomenon because, again, my country, Italy, is, uh, follows similar trends. Uh, Italy is third, was third last year in terms of number of parties and only 16th in terms of uh, choice of the place of arbitration. And perhaps there are other similarities between the two countries to which I will come in a minute. 
Finland is a signatory uh, to the New York Convention. It has, in addition to uh, arbitral institutions operating in the country, an excellent uh, local institution in the Finland Arbitration Institute, whose rules were amended quite recently uh, to follow best practices and standards. Courts have, I understand and I know from the few presidents I am familiar with, a pretty, uh, a pretty favorable attitude to the uh, arbitral process. Even more importantly, I would say, um, we are in a country, you have, most of you have the chance of living in a country which is at the top of the ranking in terms of respect of the rule of law and uh, corruption freedom. And here, I'm afraid, the uh, comparison with my country stops. Um, it's almost scary how corruption-free this country is. So most boxes are ticked to have a good place of arbitration. So what is missing? There may be, of course, general considerations which go beyond the quality of uh, the country's arbitration system, uh, strictly speaking, and which prevent the jurisdiction from imposing itself as an important um, uh, uh, place for international arbitration. For example, the bargaining power that Finnish parties may have in, um, in this respect. Uh, I understand, however, I also understand that Finland has legislation which, uh, though not directly um, based on the ancestral uh, model law, was inspired uh, by it when it was drafted back in uh, 1992. As I said, I, of course, hesitate in uh, pointing to specific aspects of the law, let alone to indicate uh, if and how the law should be uh, uh, amended. However, I think I can mention uh, a few points um, which just as takeaways for you to, uh, to consider. First, the law is now, I understand, almost 25 years old. And uh, I think this is not in line with uh, trends in other countries where arbitration laws have been updated uh, at shorter intervals, especially in recent times. Arbitral practice evolves and it is difficult to keep pace with it without reforms. Second, and to refer to a more a specific aspect. Um, I am quite familiar with uh, interim measures. I understand the law in Finland is silent about the power of arbitrators to in order interim relief, and this is generally interpreted not as preventing arbitrators uh, from making orders which would be binding on the parties, if the parties have so agreed, for example, by reference to arbitration rules. Um, but that orders, interim orders, urgent uh, measures adopted by arbitrators would not be enforceable. And here, um, again, the comparison with my own country comes quite natural because, as you may know, the Italian Code of Civil Procedure contains a specific provision which, which is quite unique in the um, international uh, panorama which expressly prevents arbitrators from ordering uh, interim uh, measures. And this is also in Italy generally interpreted not as making any order or any contrary agreement of the parties as uh, null and void, but as making the order made by the arbitrators uh, unenforceable. And this is traditionally mentioned as one of the most important reasons for parties to stay away from Italy, especially non-Italian parties, to stay away from Italy as a place of arbitration. So correct me if I'm wrong, and of course I'm here to, to learn in this respect, but I understand that the practical effect would not be much dissimilar in uh, Finland. This may be a matter not particularly relevant, not relevant in all uh, arbitrations, but as I said, uh, first of all, the importance of interim relief in international arbitration is um, growing, and also what I described as the venue uh, market uh, is increasingly competitive. So a change in the law in this uh, respect, even if considered as purely cosmetic, if I may, may have a positive impact on the perception of the jurisdiction as being more uh, arbitration friendly. Very briefly, my uh, conclusions before leaving you uh, to the drinks. Uh, competition among arbitration seats is uh, increasingly harsh. This is a matter of fact. Uh, the diversification of the international venue market reflects similar trends registered with respect to other uh, parameters, such as the nationality of the parties. But the choice of the place of arbitration by parties, uh, institutions, and arbitrators seems to be made on the basis of criteria different from the nationality of those involved in the, in the process. There are legal and practical considerations which suggest uh, the choice of jurisdictions which uh, have gained a reputation as reliable and arbitration-friendly venues. 
As far as the legislation is uh, concerned, uh, unless the jurisdiction is historically or traditionally or for other reasons considered as a natural option for parties uh, involved in international contracts, as is the case of France, the UK, uh, Switzerland, or to mention a neighbor, uh, uh, Sweden, it is, I think, undeniable that the ancestral model law is uh, the benchmark and that any departure uh, from it may be seen with a certain degree of suspicion by parties, especially uh, foreign uh, parties. It is possible to brand uh, a jurisdiction and to enhance its reputation as an arbitration center, but I think there are also limits to uh, what these uh, efforts can achieve. And these limits seem to depend on the perceived neutrality and impartiality of the legal system uh, at the seat of arbitration, but even more on the active uh, support of the local uh, arbitration community. And I think this is the uh, challenge, but also the encouragement um, that I can leave to the Finnish uh, arbitration community after this excellent day in Helsinki and especially after this impressive conference. I think I can say I'm more than uh, optimistic about the future of international arbitration in this country, but success in establishing Finland as an important place for international arbitration requires both adopting uh, the right measures, in particular uh, legislative measures, and enduring support by uh, the local uh, community. This is by no means a sprint. This is definitely a, a marathon to which the Finnish community, I think, must be prepared over the next few years. And with this, I thank you very much.